Welcome. We will now take up the relative viewpoint on schemes. So remember that when we looked at varieties, we always studied them over a fixed algebraically closed ground field. Then when we started looking at schemes, we dropped this and looked at schemes without reference to any base object. This is a strength because we didn't, uh, we were no longer forced to stick with algebraically closed fields. But in many situations, the natural thing is to study objects over some object. For example, if we look at the complex numbers as a ring, the morphisms, the automorphisms of the complex numbers form a huge set. And yet often when we study things over the complex numbers, we want to study them, so to speak, modulo the difficulties that the complex numbers present themselves. We want to view, say, the polynomial ring as an object over the complex numbers, as a complex algebra, not as an absolute ring. And this uh, means that we need to study things over some base. But now this base doesn't have to be an algebraically closed field. For example, if we return to just looking at the complex numbers, that, by the way, as a scheme, is a scheme with underlying set consisting of just one point. Then we can study them, well, as objects over themselves, or as objects over the real numbers, or as objects over the integers, for example. And so, formally, spec C will be viewed as a scheme over spec C, or spec R, or spec Z, or something more general. On the algebraic side, this corresponds to the difference between studying a ring absolutely and studying a ring as a k-algebra. And we'll be able to do this over any base scheme. So let y be a scheme. A scheme over y, or a y scheme, is a scheme with a morphism from x to y. And if x and x prime are two such schemes over y, then the morphism of y schemes from x to x prime is a morphism that is compatible with these structure maps. So we have x here with its structure map f down to y and x prime with its structure map f prime down to y and we want g to be a morphism of schemes that in addition makes this diagram commute. So uh, note that we sometimes write x for the scheme x over y and sometimes explicitly write f from x to y. This will depend on the context whether we need this or not. Also, if our base scheme y happens to be an affine scheme, then instead of saying that x is a scheme over y, we'll say that x is a scheme over s or an s scheme. And if the scheme x also is affine, then we're just dealing with an S-algebra. So in the most general case, we have x mapping down to y. Sometimes we have an affine base. Sometimes we have an affine scheme over an affine base. And by the contravariant equivalence, this corresponds to an algebra homomorphism from S to R, which is the same as an S-algebra structure on R. One example is the scheme associated to, say, an affine variety over K. Then we want to view this as a scheme over spec K. So if this is the scheme associated to x, then, then we want to view this over spec k rather than absolutely as a scheme. One important construction with these uh, relative schemes is that of a fiber product that will generalize the product where we now have a base. So let us look at this definition. So we're given two schemes x1 and x2 over a scheme y and we want to form a product of them so we have x1 
over y and x2 over y with maps f1 and f2. And a fiber product of x1 and x2 is a scheme P with morphisms Pi, P1, Pi i, so Pi1 to x1 and Pi2 to x2, making this diagram commute and satisfying a universal property with respect to this, meaning that if there is another scheme Z with such maps, say, pi1 prime and pi2 prime, then there is a unique map from Z to P that fits into this diagram. And so P is universal with this property. And the claim is that the fiber product of any two schemes exists and is unique up to a unique isomorphism. Well, uniqueness up to a unique isomorphism is immediate from the universal property. As for existence, we start with the affine case. So in that case, everything is affine. So Y is spec of S and Xi is spec of Ri. So Xi being a scheme over Y, this means that Ri is an S algebra. So we can take the tensor product of R1 and R2 over S as S algebras. If we take the spectrum of this, this will satisfy the properties required from the fiber product because so does the tensor product upon reversing the arrows. So if you check the details, this will check out. And the general case is obtained by gluing. So indeed, the product exists. And we have seen a similar construction before for varieties. The notation is product over y of x1 and x2. And one thing that we can note is that this y we are free to choose. So if x1 and x2 are schemes over multiple schemes, we get different things considering them over different bases. In particular, if we have a scheme x and closed subschemes x1 and x2, then we always have the maps that we intuitively think of as inclusion uh, from x1 and x2 to x. And if we take the fiber product, the pullback with respect to these two maps, then we get the fiber product over x. And this we take as the definition of the scheme theoretic intersection of x1 and x2. And it comes by composing any sequence of these maps with a structure map down to x. So it is an x scheme. If you do the same construction in the category of sets, then you get exactly the intersection of sets. But this doesn't mean that this intersection of schemes will behave well with respect to any set theoretic thing you might expect from it, so it has to be handled with care. Now, one goal is to understand varieties and pre-varieties as schemes. So we want to get there. And uh, remember, we have this construction that to a variety or to a pre-variety in general associates a scheme. And it seems to behave well with respect to morphisms. But the question is, which schemes indeed come from varieties in this way? Well, remember that when we defined pre-varieties, we had a few conditions that we didn't have for schemes. And one of them is that of finite type. So we need to define what it means for a Y scheme X to be of finite type. And we say this as follows, that X is of finite type over Y if Y admits an affine open cover so that over each patch of that cover, 
x or the part of x that lies over that patch has a finite cover by uh, spectra of finitely generated SI algebras, where SI simply are I in this notation. So uh, this might seem to be a bit uh, all over the place. Why can't we just have one condition? Well, first of all, we're allowing Y to be as, we, as big as we want it to. So we have no uh, restriction on how many uh, UI we need to cover Y. But over each cover, we look at the pre-image of this map F, of the structure map. And we cannot be sure that it is a fine, but what we require is that it is covered by finitely many um, affine schemes of finite type in the sense that there are spectra of uh, algebras that are finitely generated over their respective bases. One example is if we take schemes of finite type over a field K. Then since the spectrum of K consists of only one point, the first part just goes away. And so then we just require that this scheme has a finite open cover by spectra of finitely generated K algebras. The second property we required uh, from varieties was that of being reduced, meaning that the coordinate algebra didn't have any um, nil potents in the case of affine varieties. And so indeed we call a scheme reduced if the sections of its structure sheaf do not have any nil potent elements, any elements different from zero that have some power equal to zero. Then, in fact, over an algebraically closed field, a scheme comes from a pre-variety if and only if it is reduced and of finite type. More precisely, this association that to x associated the scheme associated to x and to f associated the corresponding morphism of schemes that I now write with the same subscript, this defines an isomorphism of categories from the category of pre-varieties over k to the category of reduced schemes of finite type over k. This is because if you unbox the definitions, in order for a scheme to be a pre-variety, uh, you need the affine patches with which you cover your scheme to be affine varieties. And an affine variety is precisely an affine scheme over K that is reduced and of finite type. So we identify pre-varieties as a concept with reduced schemes of finite type over an algebraically closed field K. And when we say a point of a pre-variety, then we mean a closed point of the corresponding scheme. And when we say a morphism of pre-varieties, we mean a morphism over K, a morphism of schemes over spec K. Now, in order to go all the way and do the same thing for varieties, we need to define what it means to be separated. So in complete analogy with the definition for varieties, we say that a scheme X over Y is separated if the image of the diagonal morphism from X to X uh, fiber product over Y with itself is closed. So this is the map that maps something like that with this notation understood properly. And then because the definitions align perfectly, the maps that associate to X the associated scheme and to F the associated map define an isomorphism of categories from the category of varieties over K to that of separated reduced schemes of finite type over K. This is just because a variety is by definition a separated pre-variety. So now we can view a variety as a separated reduced scheme of finite type over K. And because of all the equivalences of categories that we have had, this will not be any loss or gain of information in this case, 
it will just place varieties in the context of schemes so that we can view them as one and the same type of objects. Well aware that schemes, of course, allow us to work in much greater generality than uh, those coming from varieties.